welcome to Biology for Bastards, teaching biology in the most profane way you've ever seen or heard. I'm your host, John Doty. Thanks for listening. This season, we're going through the AP Biology curriculum one chapter at a time. We are on chapter 26, Phylogeny and the Tree of Motherfucking Life. It's not actually called that. It's just the Tree of Life. It would be cool, though. It was the motherfucking tree of life. Or the tree of motherfucking life. But it's not. It's just the tree of life. So what this chapter is all about is classifying shit. That's what phylogeny is. Classifying, um, you know, shit. Life. Biology. It's what this is all about. So what we have, we have this broader category called systematics. And this is where you're classifying stuff based on, you know, a bunch of different things. And then eventually you're determining the evolutionary relationships. And that's what phylogenetics is. Phylogenetics is the evolutionary history of something. And kind of alongside of that is taxonomy. And that's just where we classify things, put things in a group so we can figure shit out. And there's a bunch of ways that we figure out the evolutionary relationships. It could be fossils, you, you know, comparing the physical structures, connecting the dots. There's morphology and homologous structures, which we've talked about. That's where it's the same structure, different function type of shit. Um, and then really the way it's done more often now than in the past, and just kind of more often in general, is based on molecular evidence. So um, similar DNA, similar amino acid sequences, all that fun stuff. That's kind of how you really focus on it now. So we've got taxonomy and we have phylogenetics. Those are two different categories. Taxonomy is just like, like I said, classifying shit, naming things, kind of giving things their big fancy name. That's where you get, um, shit, what's his name? Linnaeus and the Linnaean taxonomy, the binomial nomenclature where every species or every organism on the planet has its scientific name that's, you know, genus and species. Um, in the example that's in the PowerPoint up on the website, biologyforbastards.com, boom, nailed it. Okay, that's where, you know, it's a panther. Okay, species name is Panthera pardus, pardus. I don't fucking speak Latin. I don't know. Um, but this is the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, genus, not genius, genus, species that we've talked about. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So remembering those, I always learned dear King Philip came over for good sex because, you know, who wouldn't? That's taxonomy. We also have phylogeny. And the big thing with phylogeny are phylogenetic trees. And what they look like, they look kind of a lot like pedigrees, if you remember, or just the regular um, tree, like a family tree or whatever. But each branch shows the evolutionary history of a different group of organisms where each branching is where the lineage diverges. And you can have different taxa Tax is the plural of taxon, and a taxon is just a group within phylogenetics. So it's um, like the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, family, genus. Taxon is just a group. And what we're really trying to get at is, you know, a cladogram. So phylogenetic trees and cladograms are very similar. But what a cladogram does is it depicts patterns of different shared characteristics. And these characteristics are often de shit are often called, well, fuck, that's not what I want to say. These characteristics are often derived characteristics. What that means is it's the first time that trait has shown up in any organism and everything after that in the cladogram has that derived characteristic. So there's the example shown in the uh, the PowerPoint of, you know, you have a lancelet and then you get a vertebral column and then you get lamprey, tuna, salamander, turtle, leopard. Everything after that has the vertebral column. 
and then as you keep going, hinge draws. Lampreys don't have hinge draws, but tuna salamander, turtle, leopard do on down the line. And what these little groups are, these are clades. And what the clade is, it's a group of species that has all the ancestral species and all the descendants. So the clade is the group within cladistics um, and phylogeny. So it's just, you know, you have in the taxonomy, the Linnaean taxonomy, you might have the class aves with all the birds. You'd have the clade aves in cladistics. So it's basically the same fucking thing, just a little bit different because um, some of the scientific names, they were based on physical features and then clades is more on evolutionary history. So the clade reptilia includes birds because birds are a descendant of reptiles. And there's three different types of groups you can have within a cladogram. You can have a monophyletic group. That's what I've been talking about where it has um, all the ancestors or it has an ancestral species and all of the descendants. So that's monophyletic. Next, you can have paraphyletic, which is basically monophyletic, but you're leaving out one of the little subgroups for whatever reason. I don't know why you would, but if you are, then it's a paraphyletic group. And then polyphyletic group is where you are including one from a different ancestral species. And this is better visually than verbally. So go to the website, Check it out. Follow along to the PowerPoint. They're there for a reason. Check them the fuck out. Or don't. I don't give a shit. It's whatever you want. I'm just putting them there because I care. So that's the name of the game. Um, so, when you are building phylogenetic trees, the branches and the length of the branches, they can represent a couple different things. They can represent genetic change. So how... Um, how many mutations or whatever have piled up since they first formed, or they can represent time where um, everything meets up at the one side that is present day, and then the length of the branches indicate the amount of time that has passed since you know they've diverged. Uh, and you can have a couple different shapes of trees. You can have rooted trees. Those are the ones that you see a lot they uh they make the most sense just visually um i personally like circular trees i just think they're really pretty um then you have unrooted trees which just they're the most confusing looking one but what's good about the circular tree and the unrooted tree is it doesn't give this sense of you know, hierarchy. This one's better than that one. This one's more evolved or advanced than the other. And sometimes you can get that from the rooted tree. Some people look at it and see, well, if it's at the top, it's more evolved than the things at the bottom. They're all equally evolved. Life started together and it's been, everything that's around has been evolving for the same amount of time. I was about to get on a soapbox and get start on a rant there, but I stopped myself. I stopped myself, so good for me. Um, so, when you are building trees, what you try to do is you want the simplest explanation or the fewest number of DNA changes to make the tree, which makes a lot of fucking sense. It's super obvious. Like, you're not going to expect all these shit mutations to happen and somehow end up with something when you can easily explain it with a smaller number of mutations that's what you're going to use so it's the principle of maximum parsimony where you're using the simplest explanation the fewest dna changes when you're making the tree and you can use this because of this idea of a molecular clock which basically states that there's some regions of dna that evolve at a fairly constant rate so you can use these mutations that pop up in these chunks of DNA to measure the date of past events. So how many mutations have passed 
work backwards and you can figure out approximately, you know, within reason, when something happened. Like, for example, it's estimated that the origin of HIV in humans occurred around the 1930s. And they do that by measuring the amount of mutations that have popped up um, and, you know, doing some basic math, figuring that shit out. But that's about it. Um, phylogeny is pretty fucking straightforward. It's really just the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, a little cladistics, and that's about it. So we'll wrap this up, make this one really short after a couple long ones, and this is the last evolution one. After this, we get into the ecology, which does have a lot with evolution, but it's a little bit different. So um, if you haven't yet, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, all that shit. Tell everybody you know about it. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're at bio for bastards on everything. Um, check out the website, biologyforbastards.com. Uh, our intro and outro music is the song Feeling Good by Purple Planet Music. And I have been your host, John Doty. And until next time... Thanks for listening.